All right, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, or whatever time it happens to be. Uh, I got good news. I just dropped a marker. <laughs> How can I drop it so quickly? We just started. All right, never mind, I picked it up again. And I got good news again, it's a new marker. Let's get started. Today we're talking about complex numbers. Today we're talking about the imaginary unit. And I'm just going to say something and you have to believe me. You have to believe me like you believe someone you trust. So hopefully I have your trust. This complex digit is important. It is not a figment of your math teacher's imagination. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. When I was a young boy... Sorry, I play music while I, while I think. Um, when I was a young boy, I used to be an engineer. I tell you, I used to be an engineer. And this complex unit, you open up any physics or engineering textbook, it's everywhere. It allows us in engineering to be able to represent the amplitude and phase of a signal. Forget about all that. I don't need you to know that. I just need you to know that it's important for a reason it is. And it's also important because for whatever reason, your teacher just asked you to learn it. So let's go get it, sports fans. First of all, the question here is gonna be simplify. So let me write it. Simplify. There you go, get a little Y action there on there. So what we mean with the complex uh, number, i.e. and the imaginary unit, to simplify means we can't have an imaginary unit in the denominator, uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. And one of the beautiful things about this imaginary unit is it's very easy to make it disappear. It's very easy to make this imaginary unit disappear. I'm gonna show you how you do it, people. I'm gonna show you how you do it. Here you go. If you wanna make that disappear, what you do, you multiply it by what's called its complex conjugate. So we're gonna multiply that by eight minus 2i. Now this is a fraction, people, and you cannot go and multiply the denominator of a fraction without also multiplying that numerator. So let's go get it. Let's do it. Let's bring it. There we go. So now we kind of want to think about these as being in parentheses. So we're going to multiply the denominator by its complex conjugate and also multiply the numerator by the denominator's complex conjugate. So let's go get it. So really, these are two binomials. So I'm going to use what we, uh, what we call the FOIL method. Uh, the FOIL is essentially a double distribution. Okay, so for the FOIL method, what you do is you take this first term and you multiply it like that. So eight times eight is eight squared. So I'll just go right to 64. Eight times negative two i. In this instance, i is gonna be treated much like we treat variables. So just like eight times two x is 16 x, eight times two i is 16 i. And we have that subtraction sign. So minus 16 i. All right, so let's go this way. 2i times 8 is going to be plus 16i. Ah, oh, yeah. So see you later, I. You just got yourself canceled. Uh, last one. We're going to go 2i times 2i. Now here's the magic of the imaginary unit. Here's its special power. But let's see. So positive 2 times a minus 2 or a negative 2 gives you minus 4 i times i gives you i squared. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the top, do the same thing, maybe at a slightly more in uh, quicker pace. So I'm gonna FOIL, which is a double distribution. I'm taking that term, and I am multiplying it by that term, and by that term. It doesn't echo in here as much. Now that we fix the acoustics, a little echo. My singing isn't quite as beautiful as it used to be. Uh, oh man, seven times eight. Ugh. I know seven times seven is 49, so if I add another seven, I get to 56. Let's go 56. Let's do it, come on. Be gutsy, people. 56. Seven times negative two i is minus 14 i. 
Step, now we're gonna switch over. We got this turn, we're going twice. Three times eight is 24. Three times eight is 24. You wanna consider that a minus three, you can, okay? Think about this as, as the plus minus there. So we got minus three times eight, it's gonna give us minus 24i. And negative three i times negative two i is positive six i squared. Because a negative three times a negative two is a positive six, and an i times an i is an i squared. So let's go get it. We almost done, people. We almost done. Lord, we almost done. So I'm gonna combine my like terms. 56, negative 14 i minus 24 i is minus so wait, negative 14, and I'm subtracting 24, so I gotta get smaller than negative 14. I gotta get more negative than negative 14. That's gonna give me negative 38. I got, I got super negative there. Plus six times, dun 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 dun. One of the powers of the unit i is when you square it, you get a negative one. You gotta be kidding me, negative one? You squared something and you got yourself a negative one? Mr. Miller, I thought every time we squared it made things positive. Oh yes, oh yes, that's normally true. But it, when we're allowed to use the imaginary axis, okay, in complex representation of numbers, I squared is negative one. Again, I, I can't get in a whole uh, speech as to why it's so important. Just trust me. Trust me. The, the imaginary unit is no joke. It's no joke. It's our magic tool as mathematicians and physicists and engineers. I'm almost done. Bear with me. All right, 64. The whole reason we're doing this is because the numerator had the I and we didn't want that. So look. Hey, I, see you later. Negative 16i plus 16i is zero. Nothing. Move on. Minus 4i squared is negative 1. We always make, when we're simplifying with the imaginary unit, we always make our i squareds go to negative 1. Looking really good here. So I just have to tidy this up a bit. 56, this is going to become minus 6, right? Because I'm going to positive times the negative. It's going to give me 50 minus 38i divided by 64 plus 4 is 68, which is a pretty good solution. And your teacher might want you to, to factor, uh, factor out the top to, to get this reduced. Either way, I'm just gonna circle it. Or, usually in physics or engineering, this thing would be brought out like this, minus 38 over 68i. And then what we would do, did my voice just crack? <laughs> it happens, it happens. Trust me, I'm talking to the students who aren't here. Uh, it happens, I right? Come on, come on, y'all in high school, it's happened before. That's what I tell them, all right. And then uh, you'd make these uh, decimal representations, that would be your complex number. Uh, gorgeous, let's try another one. Let's try just one more. All right, here we go. Let's do uh, negative three plus six i over two minus four. Oh, look, why am I getting all these perfect, let's like, screw that up a little bit, five minus four i. All right, so that's a beautiful song I just started playing. Let me turn it up for you real quick. All right, hit pause. I want you to attack this problem, and then I want you to hit play, and I want you to correct your work. So ready, hit pause. Everything here got so bad, good reason for concern. All right, musical interlude has just ended. Let's go, let's get it. We have to simplify this. So you can't have that in the denominator. You just can't, all right? It's not considered simplified. So, let's get the complex conjugate going. Boom. That's gonna get rid of that I, because that I is what we don't want. Let's multiply. I'm gonna bust a little foil in action here. So, I'm gonna get five times five is 25. 
5 times 4i is plus 20i. One second. Alright, this is one notch to turn the music down. Uh, here we go, we got negative 4i times positive 5i is negative 20i. Hey, they're gonna cancel. Hey, they're gonna go away. Hey, that equals zero. And now we got negative 4 and a positive 4 gives me minus 16i squared. To the numerator, we got uh, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. I just put the parentheses to help remind us that it's, every, it's this entire numerator times this entire numerator. Uh, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12i. Move on. Don't, don't, come on, stay with me. We almost there. We almost there. Come on, focus. I got 6i times 5 is plus 30i. And I got 6i times 4i is plus 24i squared. My basketball coach used to tell me there's no I in team. Oh, maybe not. But there is an I in a complex number. There's an I in algebra too, let me tell you. All right. So I'm going to add these like terms. Remember, the imaginary unit becomes like terms with each other. So I got negative 15 plus negative 12 plus 30. So I'm down here, like, I think of it as like a, a hole, right? I'm at negative 12. And I'm going to fill it 30, so I need to go up, this is plus 30, then this needs to be 20, 18 feet above ground, okay, it'd be 18 feet above ground if you started in minus 12 and you added 30 feet. So let's just go with it. 18i plus 24 times... I keep putting it in orange because I say it's the fundamental thing. I squared becomes negative one. All right, come on, come on. 25. Doesn't it feel good to say that equals zero? Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that just hint of loveliness? All right, minus 16. Breaking out the orange pen. Mr. Mill, is that a new orange pen? You're damn right it's a new orange pen. You're a special person. If you weren't, I wouldn't bother making this video, and I wouldn't bother using a new pen. I, I don't have to know you. I don't have to know you. You're still a special person. Negative 15 minus 24. Well, negative 15 minus 20 would be negative 35. So we're going to go negative 39. Plus 18i. All of that over 25 plus 16, so 25 plus 10 is 35, plus 6 is 41. Alright, and then we're, we're good there. That's the correct answer. Or you break it up and you drop it down to decimals. Alright, and one second, I'll pause the music here and, and make this last point. I, didn't, I don't have a calculator handy or I would just show you what the decimal is. Uh, in, in finishing, we have this imaginary unit, which I told you it's an important unit. You just have to have faith right now. Okay, the video would be too long if I went into it. It is. It's meaningful and it's important. Um, we got to get rid of it though because it can't be in the denominator. It's not that it's a bad thing, but as far as this making sense, it doesn't make as much sense to us as this does. For reasons, again, this is very meaningful. I could graph this very quickly. This, not as quickly, okay? So there's, this, is a, this is not a useless operation we're doing. So what I'm doing is by using the complex conjugate and the property that that's gonna make the imaginary unit go away, meaning we have a real number. It's always gonna give you a real number. That's what we wanted, as a real number in the denominator. So that's what we did. Uh, up here, I had to multiply the top by whatever I multiplied the bottom because it's a fraction. If you don't do that, you'll change the value of your fraction. You keep in mind that i's become like terms and that i squared is negative 1. i squared is negative 1. Your i's are like terms. You follow that, you're going to be in good shape. Uh, stick with it. Have a beautiful day. Make sure... Uh, Make sure you, I don't know, I don't have any groundbreaking advice.
I'll just say uh, goodbye. <laughs>